It's time for the video that so many of you have been asking for. What kind of range loss do you experience in an F-150 Lightning when you have 9,000 pounds on the back? And exactly how does that compare with something like this Chevy Silverado turbo diesel. This one is EPA rated for 23 miles per gallon out on the highway and about 504 miles of range. The Lightning over here, it is rated for 320 miles of range according to the EPA, but we need to talk about that number because I see a lot of videos out there where people say, well, I tried to tow with my Lightning and it's rated for 320 miles of range and I only got 200 miles of range out of it. That's a severe reduction out on the highway. Well, uh, here I would say no Sherlock because the highway rating on this truck is not the combined rating for the truck. So we have a little bit of a miscommunication going on here. Over here in the Silverado, 23 miles per gallon is its highway rating. 21 miles per gallon is the combined number. So when people say, well, you know, I towed and it got 18 miles per gallon, it was rated for 21, that's a pretty good number. Well, sure, versus the combined number, but your highway number, which is where you were towing, that's 23. So that's a pretty decent drop off of that number. Pretty much the same things going over here in the Lightning. This one is EPA rated for 320 miles per gallon combined based on 70 MPGE. Highway rating though, that's only 63 because aerodynamically the Lightning, it's basically a brick. So its highway efficiency number is going to be lower. 283 miles for this specific model. So going from 283 miles down to 200 miles of towing range is not as big of a drop as going from 320 down to 200 miles. And that's because big electric vehicles like the Lightning, like the Rivian R1T, Rivian R1S, Hummer truck, Hummer SUV, and likely the upcoming crop of pretty square electric vehicles from Hyundai and Kia, et cetera, they have lower highway ratings than city ratings. And that is not something that we're used to when we're talking about vehicles in North America, because that pickup truck has a higher highway rating, just like every other gasoline and diesel vehicle in America outside a number of hybrids. It is very, very rare for a traditional gasoline or diesel vehicle to have a higher city rating than highway rating, which results in this skewed perspective. When we're talking about an electric vehicle like this, it is the opposite, and that is a very critical thing to keep in mind. Also critical, if you really want 320 miles of range out of your pickup truck, you should not buy a Lightning because it will not do it. Even according to Ford's own testing and the EPA validated testing, 283 miles is what you should expect out of this model if you're driving like they do on the EPA test. And if you're driving like regular people drive, it's gonna be more like 240, 250. That's important to keep in mind. So the range loss when towing should be based off of those relative figures not the 320 miles. Now let's talk about what I've got on the back. This is my familiar flatbed trailer. This weighs about 3,700 pounds in its own right, just completely empty. Over here, I have a pallet of retaining wall blocks. This is 3,000 pounds. And because that wasn't quite heavy enough for me, I decided to put my side-by-side -side on the back. And then I put an extra few hundred pounds of blocks in its bed to make this trailer weigh just under 9,500 pounds. The reason for that is the Lightning may be rated to tow 10,000 pounds, but that Silverado Trail Boss, it's not rated to tow that much. So I needed to lighten up the trailer. Now, why don't I have the Durango on the back as I've had in previous videos? Well, that is pretty easy to answer. You see, I had two pallets of these blocks on the trailer yesterday and removing one of the pallets of blocks, I ended up straining my back. So I decided I was not gonna lift the other pallet off the trailer to put a Durango on it. I was just gonna leave that one right there and then add enough weight to get us back to about 9,000 pounds. And if that's not a good enough reason for you all, then my back says you can watch another channel. For those curb weight calculators out there, this is a Kawasaki Mule Pro MX with the electric power steering. So it's just over 1300 pounds. And then back here in the bed, we have 600 pounds of concrete blocks just to make sure that we get up to that target weight. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying that the range loss in this Lightning is gonna be insignificant. It's probably gonna be pretty big and more than say 20% or so. I'm just saying this discussion needs to be framed appropriately because what I tend to see out there is, well, you know, at, at 80 miles an hour, my whatever pickup truck, 
you know, gets 18 miles per gallon. I hook a trailer to the back and it only drops down to 16 MPG. And I say, well, how fast are you towing? And they're saying, well, I'm not speeding. You know, I'm wherever that has a speed limit and I'm going 60 miles an hour. Well, yeah, of course. But what would this be like if you were going the same speed? Say you drive that pickup truck just 65 miles an hour, you're gonna get much better fuel economy than at 70 or so, which is why in this test, we're gonna be doing four loops. We're gonna be driving this truck, then the Silverado with the trailer on the back. Then we're gonna be driving them empty at the same speeds over the same roads. Then we're gonna compare the numbers. At this point in time, I really don't know what those numbers will be. So let's just uh, do the testing, see how it sorts out. Now's a good time to talk about the towing route. I live at 1300 feet. So the first thing I have to do is find a freeway. Closest freeway is California's Highway 1 here in Santa Cruz County. Speed limit here is 65 miles an hour. It's about eight miles to the freeway. Now, on all of my towing tests, I go 62 miles an hour for an important reason. The towing speed limit in California is technically 55. Relatively few people actually follow the speed limit, but I am one of the people that tries to get close for two reasons. The first one, I truly believe that lower speed limits for towing vehicles is quite sensible because there's more inherent risk. It takes them longer to stop, etc. And the second and perhaps more important thing is I'm not going to film myself going that fast and giving evidence for getting a ticket later in the mail. So two important reasons there that the speed is kept to 62 miles an hour. This section of Highway 1 may have the speed limit I'm looking for, but it is not as level as many people's driving situations around the country, especially if you live in the middle of the U.S. where the highways tend to be fairly flat. Around here, there is pretty much constant elevation change, kind of going up one lump and then down the next. That will have an impact on the efficiency of both of these vehicles. For some reason, a large segment of EV owners and EV intenders seem to believe that going up a hill is free for an EV and that you will recover all of that energy going down the hill. That is absolutely not the case. In testing with this exact vehicle completely empty, going up and over a 2200 foot mountain pass, and then driving that same exact distance, same average speed on a regular highway, it's about 30% less efficient to go up that mountain pass, just as you'd expect in pretty much any vehicle. The reason is that it takes a lot of energy to get up the hill. Electric vehicles are heavier than regular gasoline vehicles, so that difference is gonna be a little bit larger there. And then regenerative braking is not 100% efficient. It actually is pretty inefficient compared to the amount of energy you expended to get you up the hill in the first place. Now, I will say that both of these vehicles do a good job keeping this trailer speed in check. The F-150 Lightning has pretty aggressive regeneration ability, and because of the blended braking system, even if you have to use the brake pedal to slow the truck down, you're still regenerating power into the battery. And that's a little bit different than something like the Rivian, which does not have a blended braking system. So the throttle liftoff regen is all you get, and it's much less aggressive than here in the Lightning. In the diesel truck, it has the only engine braking system in a turbo diesel half ton truck. And I'm talking about exhaust braking. We find that in three quarter ton and one ton trucks, but for some reason, not in the Ford F-150 or the Ram truck with their small diesels, because those diesel engines weren't designed from the ground up to be used in a pickup truck. So they just didn't include that feature. Only one more drive loop to do, and that is the Silverado on the same trailer. Let's see what happens. The reputations that some people have around electric vehicles sometimes makes me laugh because the first thing you'll notice about the EV truck versus this diesel truck is just the amount of power and torque we have in that Lightning. It makes pulling 9,000 pounds absolutely effortless. It has more pull than any one ton truck currently in America, not only because of the amount of torque, but how the torque happens. There's no transmission, so there's no gear shifting. You just step on the pedal and it pulls. Also, the torque is available from basically zero, and that's not what we see in a regular engine, even a diesel engine that has low end torque. You have to really rev a lot higher in order to get that torque to do what you want the torque to do. It's very, very noticeable. Also, this smaller diesel engine, although it has really good engine braking, obviously it's not gonna have as much as the regen ability that we have in the Lightning. After four hours of driving, it's time for the moment of truth. This route was 46 minutes long, so I could keep this drive to four hours. I had other things that I needed to do. And of course, I didn't want to spend hours and hours and hours driving a 9,000 pound trailer if I didn't have to. The Lightning, this particular Lightning, in my real world range test came in at 262 miles of real world range. 
but when you drive it more gently, you will definitely get considerably better fuel economy. So on this test, I drove it at the same speed that I was driving the trailer. At that speed, I got 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour, giving that about 340 miles of range if you can keep your foot off the accelerator pedal and really go no more than 62 miles an hour out on the open highway. This diesel here, it got 23.7 miles per gallon with the cruise control set to 62 miles an hour. I think the reason that my week-long average was just a little bit better or a little bit different with this vehicle is that it really performs very well in long, steady-state open highway driving. And this test, of course, has some mountain driving in it. Now, with this 9,500 pound trailer on the back, the Lightning averaged 1.2 miles per kilowatt hour. So definitely a significant reduction. That's a real world range with that trailer on this terrain of 157 miles. Weird and interesting twist. I got the exact same average in the Lightning with a 3,500 pound box trailer on the back. I think aerodynamics was the big reason. Now it's time for the final number, and that would be the diesel over here with the trailer attached, 12.4 miles per gallon, pretty significant reduction. That's a 48% approximate drop over here in the diesel truck, about a 65% drop or so over there in the Lightning. This next data point may just be interesting to me, it might not be interesting to you, but my weekly average in the Lightning is two miles per kilowatt hour without towing. Over here in the diesel truck, it was just a little bit higher at 24 miles per gallon. So the loss is a little bit greater compared to my weekly running average in the diesel truck and actually a little bit lower in the Lightning, about 40% over there, more like 50% over here with the diesel truck. But any way you slice it, towing is gonna have a big impact on your range. Obviously, the big advantage to the diesel is it's only gonna take five minutes to fill up and it's gonna take about two hours if you wanna drain your lightning all the way down to zero and then fill it all the way back up to 100%, which you might want to do if you're towing a heavy trailer on the back and you're really going a longer distance. Be sure and let me know what you think about all that down there in the comments section below. Let me know what else you'd like to test the lightning against. We will uh, be scouring the comment section and deciding on future videos. As always, find me at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of those social places. I'll see all of you next week.